Hello, hello everyone. This is Tammy with Plum Figgy. Well, you're at Plum Figgy and I'm Tammy. <laughs> I don't know what happened just now. <laughs> Gotta keep you guys on your toes. It's a new year. Maybe I should have a new uh, intro. <laughs> okay, so I had a request uh, recently um, from, I think, a new subscriber. So thank you for your request. Uh, they uh, saw me doing uh, the sewing in of my new collage weekly planner and um, I had that one on fast forward um, and so it was a little bit difficult actually I had a couple comments about uh, how I sewed in that those signatures um, and so they just asked if I could show it but not so fast and so yeah I can definitely do that so um, I am kind of in between projects right now so I went ahead and just created this little journal last night. I'll be putting this uh, up on my Etsy shop um, probably actually right after I finish this actually. So if you are interested in this journal, I'll have a link down in the description to the Etsy shop, to my Etsy shop where you could get it. So yeah, this was just some uh, bits and pieces of kind of scraps that I had sitting on my desk um, and ready to be done something with. So got a little pocket in the front and a double pocket in the back just did some collaging and whatnot and so this will be uh, just a single signature um, I actually there's 30 pages in here there's no decorations or anything it's all uh, just you know random run random papers that I had uh, kind of bumping around on my desk so uh, kind of a darker well, I don't know if I'd say darker, but um, more earthy tones, I guess, maybe is what I would say. Uh, so, anyway, I don't typically put this many pages into a signature, uh, in one signature especially, but they were thin enough that they weren't too bulky, so I thought I would go for it. Um, anyway, so... My spine, um, I went ahead and did an actual spine for this. It's only a half inch spine, I believe. Let me double check myself. What did I do? Yeah, it's basically a half inch spine. So pretty small spine, but enough so that uh, if you wanted to use this like as an art journal or, you know, add a bunch of pictures or your other, do do it as a junk journal, you would have room to grow just a little bit. Not tons. I mean, it's already kind of, it might be better for a right. Anyway, you guys can, if you want it, it'll be in my Etsy shop. <laughs> and if it doesn't sell, I'll find a use for it. So I'm not worried about that. But okay, back to the task at hand. So at this point now, I'm ready to go ahead and sew in my signatures, or the signatures. So um, I just have some... Um, wax covered linen thread here. I don't always use this. This is actually what you should probably use most of the time if you can. Um, I also have used, this is hemp twine that's not uh, wax covered. Actually, I tend to prefer this. The wax is good. It's just, it always gets clogged up in your needle, the eye of your needle. <laughs> so not my favorite. Um, but I have a bunch of it, so I kind of need to start using it. Um, I also use this kind of, uh, twine and maybe I should show you one that's got more. So, um, I don't know exactly what this is supposed to be for, but it's like a nylon twine. Um, I find it strong. I wouldn't use it for this kind of a situation though, because there's, this is bulky and adding more to it is just going to make it more bulky. So... As you can see, I use this kind of a lot. I'm almost done with this one. And I have it in black and brown as well, which I don't use nearly as often. But uh, depending on the situation, this could be better or worse. So that's kind of my rule of thumb. I don't know. Uh, again, I kind of do my own thing. I don't, <laughs> I don't always follow what everybody else does. So... Uh, for my needle, these are my top three needles, which is why I have them in just this paper thing because they came from different places. I don't even remember where some of these came from. This one, actually, I do remember. This one is an upholstery needle, and this one's got a sharp tip on it. Um, 
I used, and it's a lot thicker. I used to use this one more, uh, for, especially when, uh, I was using that hemp twine because at the time all I had was this, which is an embroidery needle and, um, it's a nice sturdy needle and it's also got a, um, sharp point on it here as you can see, but I had more problems because of those sharp points than, um, than it was worth. So if you can find yourself a needle, something like this, which has a rounded tip, it's still kind of sharp, but it's not like super sharp, like you're going to sew. Um, and then this one, um, I like the length of it. I think it's kind of perfect. Uh, it's not too long. It's not too short. And then mostly I love the eye of it. It's not super wide, but it's wide enough that I can easily get something that's a little thicker like this through the eye of the needle. Um, I do have to make sure and go through the very middle because that's the widest part, but I usually can get it the first time I try. So, um, and so here, I don't know if you can even see that, but there's some of that beeswax is building up in there. So <laughs> that is one con, I guess, to using the wax coated threads. Okay, so now at this point, um, I need to come up with some kind of a template. Um, I tend to, well, uh, let me start over on that because I just got rid of a bunch of them. Uh, let's see. I kind of have just a bunch of cardstocky kind of papers here. I'll just pull a few of them out. I just kind of... I've, I've got, obviously, uh, this came from a uh, Daya pizza box, <laughs> um, file folder, something, uh, you know, packaging basically, uh, that I can use as spines or, uh, for templates for, uh, making my holes in my projects. So, um, I actually used to have an entire, I guess, library of, <laughs> Uh, all my templates and I found that I wasn't ever using those or if I was I was only using one or two of them and the rest of them were just taking up room so I literally just recently got rid of them all um, but so do do what you will as far as that process goes um, but I don't want to spend tons of time just jabbering on here so basically what I do is I'm going to measure for height and I'm measuring, um, the height of my spine. And so, um, I normally will, because I want to be exact with this, grab my, uh, paper cutter and we'll cut that off. And so at this point, since I'm only putting in one signature, the template's pretty simple. Um, I'm actually going to fold this in half right now and that'll kind of help me later on, but it'll give me a straight line to work from too. Um, but one thing that I don't know that everybody, well, I always do this. I always mark where my top is, no matter what I'm always doing. It has saved me so many times. <laughs> But, okay, so for this one, I want to do a five-hole pamphlet stitch. That's what it's called, a pamphlet stitch, um, and I'm doing it five-hole. Um, typically, you would do these in odd numbers uh, if you're going to sew directly into your spine. Um, for a hidden stitch uh, situation where... Uh, I have multiple signatures and I don't want the stitches to show on the outside. Uh, I would typically do an even number of holes um, because then it's, I don't I follow the Nick the Booksmith method <laughs> because I bought her tutorial a couple years ago when I was first starting out. I think it was like 10 or $12 or something. It was 10 to $15. I tell you what spend that money. It will take you 
so far. Like, I have not really needed to look up any other kind of tutorial. And for that also, for that reason, I don't really tell all of the secrets, uh, especially for the hidden spine part. I mean, I know there are other YouTube YouTubers out there who gladly share their process and what they have come up with, but because I haven't come up with it on my own, I am not going to share her secrets and then take away potential earnings that she would have from her um, tutorial because she spent a long time putting that together and I totally appreciate that um, and it's helped me so much that I wouldn't want to get in that way in her way on that so that and I explain that every time I do one of these tutorials just because um, I think it's important that we you know uh, give props to the people of our community who have done all this wonderful stuff for us you know and um, there's a lot of sharing and I appreciate that. If you have, if you want to share or if you want to take things that I've done, um, and you know, share on your own channel, please, you know, CC me on it or let me know. But, um, happy to, happy to share the wealth of knowledge for sure. But yeah, for that kind of one, when I'm paying for it, uh, from someone else, I'm not gonna go and share it behind their back. So, okay, I'm going to, um, I have here my Tim Holtz ruler. It's a centering ruler and I've centered it, um, left and right. And so now I just marked the middle. And so that'll be one of our five, uh, holes. Um, and so then I tend, I, I don't know, I always tend to do one and a half inches from center and then an inch Let's see, so I would do another hole here, and let's see, five and a half, or four and a half would be three holes, and then I typically, yeah, I guess it would be another inch and a half from that hole, so, um, and it doesn't really matter. Uh, you can pick whatever lines you wanna use for where your, uh, holes go it really doesn't matter it just I try to evenly space them throughout the entire height of the signature so that I make sure and uh, make it as sturdy as possible that's the goal so uh, you don't want it flopping around and then also that way especially for junk journals because we have so many kind of like half pages or quarter pages uh, you you can more easily catch more most most of those pages um, by uh, spreading out your holes evenly. Uh, and then at this point now, as you can see, I'm just creating a horizontal line to mark where each of my holes will be. And because, uh, well, if I had multiple uh, signatures, then at this point I would, uh, well, actually, I would do this part first. <laughs> uh, if I had multiple signatures, I would use my centering ruler again and figure out how many signatures I have and then basically divide what space I have between and evenly space out the number of signatures I have. So that can sometimes be more or less complicated. I've found that odd numbers are really a lot easier to work with than even numbers when it's this kind of situation with multiple signatures. Um, but you can definitely do it with two or four, however many signatures you have. Um, again, the more you create, the more you do, the easier it's going to become. Uh, so, okay. So now at this point, just to help myself, because my eyes are getting older, <laughs> I'm going to create a hash mark where each of my intersections are. And then on top of that, because again, I think it just is helpful. I need kind of a bullseye. So I always, uh, circle where the middle of that, uh, cross hatch happens. And that here's a closer up look at how that looks. So now at this point, um, a lot of people will use, uh, phone book or some kind of book carol to kind of put all of this into uh, the spine of that and um, kind of secure it. I don't bother with that because 
to be honest, I don't want to have one more thing on my desk that I have to corral and find a home for. <laughs> I've got enough stuff. So, um, this is pretty much what I do. So I kind of do a pre punch of a hole, um, on my, this is a cutting mat. So I'm not worried about um, hurting it, but I kind of just do a pretty little starter hole for each of the holes. And then uh, I just hold it up and I support it with my finger and be very careful to not poke yourself because it does hurt. <laughs> I've done that plenty of times. And I just, I just give it enough support to um, poke my hole through the whole way. Okay, so simple as that. Um, there's been a few bloody fingers, but you only do that a few times before <laughs> before you don't do that very often anymore. <laughs> okay, and so then at this point, again, I'm um, of the mind of, I don't want to have another thing on my desk to have to worry about. So this is how I hold it. I hold it very securely with my left hand. I make sure and put my middle finger on the spine and then these two fingers on either side. And so they're supporting and I'll start in the middle and work, I'm pushing with this finger and pushing and twisting with this finger, making sure that my um, pages are not moving around. Now with more pages, it's definitely a lot harder to do this. So keep that in mind. And then I move towards my hand and obviously move my finger out of the way so I don't poke myself. And we're just gonna do that for each hole here. Okay, um, this last one, I've moved <laughs> my finger out of the way, but I'm really holding it with my thumb now. And this has taken practice. I mean, it's not like the very first time I did this, it was perfect and wonderfully easy, but um, it's taken practice for me. So once I do those three, I put my thing back into the middle hole. Now you see why I put top there, because this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna turn it around and do the exact same thing on the other in the other direction. Okay, so I take my thing back out and now we're going to punch this hole. And the last hole. Okay. So at this point, I very and I'm still holding it like this. I very carefully pull out my thing without moving the pages around. And so everything is still where it needs to be. All the holes are lined up. If that doesn't happen for you, you know, the first few times you do it like this, things will shift around. Uh, don't worry, you can still work with it. Um, and I'll probably have to show you an example of how. But um, now I'm remembering that this is the bottom, this is the top, okay? So at this point, oh shoot. I didn't poke my holes here. <laughs> I should have done that first. Uh, okay, so bummer. I did that out of order. That's okay. We can work with this. Okay, so I'm going to line this up as close to the center as I possibly can. And actually, I'm going to use the lines on my cutting board to kind of help me uh, get this centered. So I'm making sure that um, my bottom is lined up horizontally and on that line and I've got the center uh, in the middle of my spine. Now actually I might just add a line here and line here to better help me line up. So I'm going to match up this middle line here with this middle line here and put it in there as evenly as I can, okay? Uh, sometimes what I'll even do is, I'll take a pencil, I don't know if it'll work very well with this fabric, but a, a pencil or something, kind of an ink, and I'll go like this and draw a dot onto my fabric below. This one's difficult because there's just so much going on in this fabric. Um, but let's try it out. And then that way I can more easily punch my holes. I don't know if that, yeah, that's not gonna work. Okay, so 
I'm going to, let's do it this way. I'm going to clamp this down so it doesn't move. So see, even I, I have to come up with alternatives to what I normally would do in certain situations. I mean, every situation is going to be just a little bit different. And to be completely honest, if it's not exactly perfect every time, it's not going to be the end of the world. You can usually get around it. So, okay, so I'm going and I have my hand positioned again with support on either side of where my awl is going to come through. Also trying not to stab myself. <laughs> um, and so I'll just do that for every hole here. Okay, moving my hand down. This is where sewing for my entire life, you know, doing embroidery and whatnot, and the cross stitch has come in very handy. <laughs> so this is being difficult. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, my paper is kind of buckling on me here, so I'm gonna fix that and we'll keep going. So now we're at the middle hole. punched in both our spine and our signature. Good luck finding them. <laughs> it's going to be hard. Um, I'll be able to see them a little easier. And I can see here, I didn't get them exactly centered, but hey, yeah, you know, you live your life, you move on. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. Okay. So now at this point, I'm trying, I need to decide where I want my knot to show up. If I want my knot to be in the middle of my signature, I would start my needle from the inside and go out. Okay. If I want my knot to be on the outside of my journal, um, I would start from the outside and work my way in. Uh, if you wanted it to become a tassel, you would start your, um, your needle up here in the top hole and modify the stitch accordingly. Um, for this one, I'm just going to put it through the middle or knot it in the middle of the signature here and we'll keep that as it is. So as you can see, I put my needle through the entire uh, signature block and now I need to find the middle hole of, oops, yep, see there we go. <laughs> There's too many signatures on this in this book. Okay. Gotta find my, here's my center hole. There we go. Too many pages in this signature. That's what I meant to say. Let's see. One, two, there's my middle hole. Okay. Make my needle just a little bit longer. And then I'm just going to use my finger. I think my center hole is right here and find my center hole. There we go. Okay, so now I've got my signature. I'm holding on to it with my hands. Again, um, just trying to keep everything from shifting. Now, in this case, uh, because I've got so many pages, uh, I prefer not to hurt my fingers. <laughs> so I just grab, I have some jewelry pliers here. Some kind of pliers like this that aren't going to hurt your needle to help you guide your needle through the hole will be your best friend. <laughs> okay, and so now I'm just pulling the, the thread until I've got enough to knot it off with when I'm done. And again, depending on if you want this to dangle down, you leave it as long as you want it to be for that purpose. And so I came, I went in through the middle hole to the outside, and now I'm gonna go back in through the outside to the next hole, hopefully. I think I've got it in the right spot. This is tricky when you have a fabric cover like this. It's a little more difficult to know where where your holes are. <laughs> so you kind of got to 
feel around. Um, I don't know how well you can see it, but there's my needle. And so now I'm going to find the hole for my signature. And as you can see, it didn't catch everything. Um, so this is where, uh, like I said, if you don't have everything super lined up perfectly, it's okay. You can get there. It just takes a little bit more finagling and finessing. And so I'm just going to do every couple of pages now until I can get the needle through all of the pages successfully. Making sure I'm always putting it into the right hole, though. Um, sometimes my fingers aren't long enough to hold all the papers, so gravity helps sometimes, too. <laughs> Filming this is not always the easiest. Uh, let's see. These were used in a different thing, and I had punched these green papers. I had already punched holes in them, so I've got two different sets of holes. So that's kind of why this is, oh my gosh, this is not usually this difficult, you guys, seriously. I'm gonna... Try it like this here. get through these few smaller shorter pages now we can get there okay and so I'm just carefully kind of feeling where my needle is in comparison to the rest of the papers and uh, just taking it easy you know uh, this process can sometimes go really fast and sometimes it can just be kind of a pain <laughs> like you see here. Um, I might just let those go. I might just, and yeah, thankfully we didn't lose all of our <laughs> pages. Let's see. The pages. Yeah, I'm just going to let these go. Um, clearly it doesn't want to be a part of the journal, so we're just going to let them not be. <laughs> and, um, okay. Pulling that through. And don't worry if you don't get everything super tight right now. Actually having it a little bit loose can be a little bit helpful at this point. You can tighten everything up at the very end. Okay, so now I've got, I'm going to, I went in to the outside, came back in from the outside to the inside, and now I'm going to go back out through this top hole back to the outside, find my hole in my spine again, hopefully. Okay. Using my pliers again to help me out. Make sure my thread doesn't get caught up anywhere. Okay, so now our thread is here. I'm gonna go back in. Normally, for a five-hole pamphlet stitch, honestly, I don't know if, I don't know how a five-hole pamphlet stitch is supposed to be done. I can tell you for a three-hole, you come out, you go in, you go all the way to the bottom and come back out this one and go back in the middle one uh, on the and do your knot there. For a five hole one, I'm not sure what the correct way is. Maybe this is the correct way, I don't know. I, this is just how I kind of came up with it, that it worked for myself. So I'm gonna go back in the hole that we just went into previously and hopefully not splitting my thread. So that is something to kind of keep an eye on and it doesn't look like I did, um, but gonna go back through that hole that we just fidgeted with <laughs> uh, a minute ago. Again, just keep your patience. It's very frustrating, um, or can be. Just try and, try and keep your patience. Go one page at, page at a time. If you have to take a break, take a break.
the other direction is going to be easier because I'll be able to hold on to all those pagers. Um, so as you can see, I'm having to kind of move my needle in and out to catch the pages, but then go back through the holes um, that I didn't go. And I'm at this point, I think I'm just going to maybe go one at a time. Let's see if I can get through all of them here. This is also very hard to push through. So my finger kind of hurts. <laughs> What I don't want to do is to create a second hole. Um, so accidentally. So that's why I'm just trying to be as patient as I can. Okay, now we're there. We've got the tip of the needle through here. So I'm gonna pull that. Okay, and see what's happening on the other side. We've got that happening. Okay, now at this point, I do want to kind of secure this just a little bit more and also check to make sure I didn't accidentally thread this other piece of thread. Um, okay, so maybe what, I suppo what I'm supposed to do is come down to this hole, but that's not how I do it. I go back down through the middle hole at this point and we're going to go through here again doing a double pass through this middle hole um, back to the outside. Just kind of wiggling it through, making sure everything is looking good and lined up. Okay, using my pliers to help me out a little bit. not make a knot there yet okay okay so now we're at, out the back side I'm gonna find my next hole which looks like maybe it should be yep right there if it's hard to find yep, and I lost it <laughs> if it's hard to find the hole that you punched which happens a lot when you have a fabric covered spine uh, what I'll usually do, and you saw me in the other video doing this, is I'll take my awl and poke back through this way so that I can see where it comes out and then just don't take my eyes off that spot <laughs> and put my needle back through there. Or sometimes I'll just keep the awl there until I've got the needle into that spot where it's supposed to go. And um, it's a lot faster that way. And if you've done that, if you, I'm, I'm going to turn it this direction. Oh no, I'm not, because that'll confuse me. I'm used to, I'm used to doing it this way here now. So okay, the top part is fairly secure at this point. So now I can more easily guide the needle through the rest of the pages here. I'm just kind of feeling around for it. Um, I don't know where it went. Where did it go? Here it is. Okay, let's turn this around. Okay. And we'll pull this through. I'll go back this other direction so I don't confuse you guys. Okay, so we've gone down the middle hole and back up this next hole. And so now I'm going to go down into this last hole. And at this point is usually when I turn my everything around so I can hold on to it from this direction now. And let's see if we can find our hole in the spine. should be right here. Oh, well, maybe it's not. Let's see. It's right around there. I can feel it. There it is. Okay. So we're coming back out now at the bottom.
and I'm going to go back in through the hole that we just finished. So basically my goal is to have a straight line of thread here. Okay, and we're again going to have to share that same hole with the other thread. So this is where if you have kind of a thinner thread that will work and be sturdy, might not be a bad idea to start with that until you're really kind of more comfortable with um, sewing in signatures and then move on to a thicker thread um, like what I'm using here. I'll be completely honest, I prefer not to use this thick of a thread most times. Um, it just, yeah, it just kind of depends on the journal that I'm making and the sturdiness of what I need it to be. Uh, so, plus with these old papers that we usually use, this thicker thread is really hard on them. <laughs> it can be really hard on them and just kind of makes a big hole in them, which isn't always what you want to have happen. So, And I've arrived now back through. Pull my thread through and just double check. If you happen to uh, accidentally thread right through the middle of a previous thread, it's at this point you would want to uh, unthread your needle and use your needle to pull the free thread out of the other one and then re-thread your needle. Um, that's the fastest way that I've found to fix that. Uh, so I guess that's a tip, I suppose. So now at this point, I'm going to make sure that my th uh, thread is nice and taut, um, pulling on all of my little sections uh, and making sure that it's all good. I'm going to do this and make sure everything is nice and taut there, and it is. So now at this point, we've got our, our original tail and our new tail, and I just knot it so that the knot is in the middle of the page. And that's it. I do a triple knot usually, I'll do a double knot, and then I'll do one more on top of that. Um, and then sometimes I'll tie it in a bow, sometimes I'll just leave them long and add some charms. Sometimes I'll just snip them off close to the middle, which is what I'm going to do here. So then at the end, I always, and you can see I kind of need to do that for this journal here. I always go back through and just kind of help train the pages to lay flat. I think I got this one just a little tighter than I probably should have. Um, but sometimes they take a little bit more work than others. If you've made your book spine sturdy, shouldn't be an issue. But I just, I like to do this to kind of help things sit where they're supposed to be. I've got some thicker papers in here too, which are kind of creating that problem. But... There you go, guys. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, I'll add this to my tutorials playlist. I think I've got a few other versions of this um, in there already. So hopefully between this one or some of the others, um, you'll kind of see my process, my method. And then obviously I learned from a lot of other people, so I suggest you guys do that too. Uh, Take in as many variations of this as you can and do what works best for you. That's all I can say. Um, the other thing I would say is it just takes practice. It takes trial and error. Uh, don't do what I just did with a whole bunch of pages and a signature. Honestly, most of my signatures are about 8 to 10 pages each. Um, I really try not to go above that unless I'm doing a single signature type of a journal like this one. Um... And that's the best way that I would say to practice. Try not to do too much all at one time until you've gotten more comfortable with the entire process because then you're just going to get frustrated with everything. And that's not helpful either. So, all right, guys. Well, there you go. 
hopefully that was helpful and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.